everyone. Hello. Hello, Amo. <laughs> Hello, everyone. <laughs> Welcome. Um, we just want to wait a little while before we get some more people on. And then I want to show you what we did yesterday and in the meantime what we've sealed so that you could have a look as well. So this is a tumble dry front door cover. We, Sorry, my dog. Yeah, Brenda's on. <laughs> There's another person on as well. So this we painted with um, Midnight in Paris. It's the dark blue from Petit Rouge. And you've sealed it. I've sealed it as well with the Lelaka clear sealant. Hello, Brenda. <laughs> <laughs> and this is the bottom kick plate. Same color of the tumble dryer. Um, also painted in uh, Midnight of Paris um, from Petit Rouge and also sealed with clear lacquer. So this is going to go onto my tumble dry and this is going to be part of my um, my kitchen challenge. I hope you guys are working hard on your kitchen challenges. Um, you should submit them tonight by five. Anything that you want to change or do in your kitchen, you're welcome to post photos of. I think they're losing you. you yeah, I'm sorry if you're losing me. <laughs> so you're welcome to post photos, even if you painted with another paint, or you have just put a ribbon around the item. That's just so that we can share creative inspiration amongst um, everyone. So remember, kitchen challenge tonight at um, five o'clock. Put up all your pictures. So that we can see the lovely stuff you've made. I've put some pictures on of crafters that have um, done their projects too. Now Ma, you're going to show them your chair. This is what we've been working on for two days. It's the um, little bar stool. Can, can you see? I'm hoping you can see. So we've sealed the top. Mom still needs to seal the bottom and the legs. So today we're going to be doing a stencil on top. The reason we sealed this before we stencil is red is a very high pigmented color. So, um, hello Sophia. <laughs> um, and when you stencil with pure white on red, it's probably going to turn out pink. So we've actually sealed the top twice so that we can do a pure white stencil on top. Okay, get mom. And then we seal it again tomorrow. And then we seal it again tomorrow. Right. So I can start. <clears throat> this is my project we had yesterday. We completed it. We sealed it. This was basic blending done with Midnight in Paris and Mood of Neptune from Petit Rouge. We've done some shadow stenciling and some rain stenciling. And yeah, we just sanded it a bit softer. And we sealed it, so this is now ready to hang. So I'm not going to show you this item again. This is the last time you'll see it. <laughs> then I've been working on this rack. Let's call it a rack. <laughs> a utensil spice kitchen rack. And yesterday we did oh, the stenciling. And I actually completed the other portion for you as well. So it's going to look like so. I've just turned the stencil around a bit. We also used Neptune's Rust on the corners. It's a powder that we mixed with um, Midnight in Paris. And it actually gives you texture on an item that you like a coarse type of texture. This just to show you, I'm messing up. It's like, it's like a powder, but it's got coarse pieces inside as well. So you take some of this powder and you mix it in a separate little container with your paint. And then it becomes very texturized. And then you add your item. So what I've done on the top section, yeah. No, no, no. Yeah. Oh, you are very quick, I know. I was just touched up there a bit. Yeah, a little bit. With the red. Yeah, I'll show them now. I've just painted over my texture medium. And on this side, I've sanded it down a bit. Hi, Anita. So, 
This is the sanded version of it. This is not yet sanded in the middle. And this is the unpainted version. So I want to show you two techniques you can do with it. Let's just show you the a check, okay? Well, I just want to fix this up. You first want to fix it. Okay, cool. Alright. All right. So, when you are working with the Neptune's rust, remember it needs to dry thoroughly before you can actually start um, painting with it. Where is my brush? Okay. There you go. <coughs> Alright, one stool completed. Do you think that's dark enough? Yes, I think. Maybe a second cut once it's dry. So this is a little stool we did for Postnet. It's going to get another scent, another colour, um, another coat of white on top. So maybe just once it's there at the back. Yeah, once it's dry. So the coming back to the texture base. So you mix the powder with your paint, it becomes quite coarse and then you really just put it on either with a palette knife or with an old brush and then you can paint over it and sand it down so that you can see the other colours. But what you can also do is instead of painting totally over it, you can actually dry brush over it as well. So I'm just going to do a portion then I'm going to pick it up and show you quickly what I've done. How did you do the black over? Blue. Blue over. Oh, okay, so now you'll see there's a portion that I actually just dry brushed over and that gives you a nice effect of like a salty sea wash type thing. So that's one way of doing it. The other way of doing it is actually painting it completely and then sanding it back down, which I'm going to be doing now. What are you doing, Mom? Well, you wanted me to paint this. I just want to check your color. Is that that blue at the back? Yes. <coughs> so this is a Can little... Um, yeah. This is a little tray. Mom's going to paint this for me. So I want to show you how the um, crackle works because a lot of people asked about the crackle. So we're just going to paint one side for now, Mom, and yes. just get some crackle on so we can show you how it cracks. So we want to put the dark blue underneath and then the botanique green over that. The botanique show you the color so this is the midnight in paris the dark blue and this is the botanique that's going to go over it so the cracks we want to create are going to be this color and then we're going to paint over with this color both of them petite rouge colors all right so more because you paint your color. black your, your blue. dark blue uh, and then it dries and then you put your crack and then you paint the other That's one. exactly how it does. But is it has to be very dry? Yes. So you'll paint your first coat. But now in this weather we're not going to get it you're dry. You're going to dry it with a, the, the blow dryer. Okay. So you paint one, but just do one side for now. Paint your layer and then you go and blow dry it. And then we do our crackle thereafter. Alright, so I was busy painting this up. So I'm completely painting over my texture now and then I'm going to sand it back so that you can see some texture coming through with a darker colour. I think that is it. Alright. So now, once again, our trusty friend, the sanding block. I'm just going to go over the areas where I've actually put my texture medium on I'll come and show you now 
and then I just wipe it back with my rag. So there I've done that part, I've just done the middle part, up and yeah. So you see the little pieces of blue actually peeking through. And that's going to be part of my distressing look. Yeah, this thing is very unique. So what have you been up to, what have you been doing? I know, Brenda, you were playing with a basket that you painted. Odette, we saw your nice pictures on the page. Remember to share your pictures of your kitchen challenge by 5 o'clock today. And then, um, yeah, your ideas on what's going to be our challenge for next week would be really appreciated. You can also do this with a nail file if you don't have a sanding box. I'm not going to be sanding this area now because it's still wet. And if the pieces break off, that's fine. It's not supposed to be there then. If it stays stick, then you're lucky. <laughs> so I'm sanding back my um, Neptune's rust that I used in texture on my item. So I applied that with the dark blue and then I just painted over with the nautical but nice. And you can decide how much texture you want or how little you want. It just contributes to that distressed antique look. I saw, see you brought a visitor. Yes, I can't keep her out here on the street. Now the crack. It's a dry dragger. Feel? So I'm not sure if you guys can see from there. I'll just bring it up a bit closer again. So that you can see. What are we so looking? the an antique part, that is the Neptune's rust mixed with the Midnight in Paris. You had the darker pieces in yesterday. What happened to that? I had painted over them. I put the flame to them. And now I'm sanding them back. Oh, okay. All right, so you are dry now. Yes. Now you need a new clean brush. And what we're going to be doing now is applying some cracker, crack, crackle glaze from Petit Rouge on top of our layer of Midnight in Paris. I want the item to be cracked, so that's why we're applying it. And when you apply it, apply a good amount, yes. not too little. There you go. I'm going to go on here. Yeah. Is that good enough? Yeah, it must be not, not a thin coat. It needs to be a medi medium thickness, yeah, coat, not too thin. And then I go to the air dryer again. And then you go off to the air dryer again. Is that thick enough? Yeah, I think that's fine. I just want to show everyone. Don't turn it because it's... So this is... I'm not sure if you can see. This is the crackle glaze. Thank you, Judith. So we're going to dry this because each coat needs to be completely dry before you apply the next coat of paint on top. So we've got a layer of Midnight in Paris dried and then we've got a layer of crackle glaze and mom's now going to dry it and then we're going to apply the next layer of um, paint. Okay, let's 
let's try that again with our dog food. Right, so um, that's the crackle glaze from Petit Rouge that we're doing on that little um, shelf thing. I'm sanding back the Neptune's rust that I did yesterday. In, um, I did it with Midnight in Paris. This is the Neptune's rust for those of you looking for the first time. It's like a powder. So you mix the powder in a separate container with your paint. And then you apply it with an old brush that makes points and peaks. And you let it dry. And what I've done is I've painted with the nautical but nice over that texture. And it's now dried completely. So now I'm sanding it back so that we can actually see the blue coming through here and there. And where it takes, it takes. Where it breaks off, it breaks off. That's just part of the distressing. The nice thing about the Neptune's rust is it can work with any paint except an oil paint. So any acrylic paint, any chalk paint, you can get the same type of texture just by mixing the two together. Just distressing it here and there. And this one I think is fine. And then I'm just dusting the excess dust away. Don't worry, we're going to clean the stenciling, so don't stress. You want to make sure before you seal your item that all your dust is gone because otherwise it's just going to pick it up with the sealant. Okay, I'm going to show you now. So. This is how our distressed item now looks. So you see, you still see the texture on the sides, that top corner. And let's turn it around for you. Oh, this thing is so heavy. So just here and there. can actually see the texture now that corner we haven't done yet because it's wet so we'll do that once it's dry now the next thing we need to do is we need to put the stencil in the smaller area but I'm not sure if you guys can see there now so let me just make some changes Oh yeah, Judy, this is my new tumble dryer door. We painted it and sealed it. We're doing our kitchen makeover with this. Alright, so let's get this around so that you guys can see what I'm going to be doing. see now so now today we need to do the small little stencil going in here and I want to try and repeat the same colors I did at the other piece of stenciling okay I'm not sure how am I going to be able to show you while I'm busy because it's quite an awkward I don't think you guys will see. So trust me, I'll show you from time to time as we go on. Still wiping my dust. 
And now finally I have the chance to actually use my masking tape to the fullest extension. Mom, I've taken over the table a little bit because this seems very awkward to show. All right, so is it now? It's, it's now dry. Okay, so now the lacquer, we've done crackle lacquer from Petit Rouge. It's dry, but you see the little glossiness. So now we're going to be painting. Okay, that's a good question, Brenda. Um, it depends on you. You can always use white at the bottom and dark over at the top. Then your cracks are going to be white. Or you can use dark at the bottom and a lighter color on top. Then your cracks are going to be dark. So it depends on what you really want. I just want to show them quickly what we do here. So when you use crackle glaze, you must remember that you don't have a lot of time to work with it. So you can't be painting backwards and forwards with this because you'll be act actually closing your cracks as they are formed in one, in one direction. direction. So what I've done is I've dipped my brush in a lot of paint. I'm going to show you. So I go like that. I, I can't go over that piece unless I've got more paint. And once it starts drying, you will actually see the cracks. So, let's get more paint in here. Let's just do it from this side now. And maybe just keep it. Okay, then it's starting to form. So, there you can already see the cracks are starting to form. That's how quick it actually works. So, Ma, if you want to, you can actually go and dry it. So you're going to be running up and down for this blow dryer today. Now that's the only way to, to get it quickly dry. Yeah. So remember with your crackle glaze, um, two contrasting colors. So if you want dark cracks, dark color at the bottom, it needs to be dried and then you need to put your crackle glaze on and it needs to dry. And then you'll put your lighter color on top and you need to work in one stroke make sure you've got a lot of paint on your brush to do one full stroke of paint okay so what I'm doing now is I'm putting the small mosaic stencil onto these little shorter pieces thinner pieces and today I'm actually going to stick it properly because I went over the lines quite a lot. I had to patch up a bit, so but that's also okay. It's not the end of the world. What have you guys been doing? Have you been keeping busy with constructive stuff or have you been watching the news? <laughs> There's not much to do when you're in lockdown, lockdown eh? Are you busy with your kitchen challenges? They need to be in tonight at five. And I need some suggestions on what the new challenge should be for next week. <coughs> there has been some pictures coming through. They were awesome. Thanks, ladies. Thank you for supporting the initiative. Yes, Judy, the, the crackle works with a chalk paint or acrylic paint. So, um, but I, I doubt if it will work with an oil-based paint. So, yeah, acrylic or a chalk paint, it will work with both. That's the crackle glaze, yeah. Just to show you how it looks. Uh, it says cracker. The petit rouge one. Okay, so how did it come out? Alright, awesome. So look there. You see our cracks? Look, this box is not even in any event. So these little bumps you see as part of the box makeup. But those are the cracks that I was after. And it came out very nice. So yeah, and it's it's fairly easy as long as you remember the principles of dry between 
and um, one movement of paint, not going backwards or forwards with the paint because then you're going to close your cracks. Is it easy enough, Mom? Yes. It works faster when the sun is there, but unfortunately now we're stuck. <laughs> because it's we raining. make a plan, we make a plan. Yes. When it's raining, it's raining. Alright, so what we've got now, I've tried to stick it as nicely as possible, is... Oh, this thing aside. So I've sticked the small little mosaic thing on the thin piece of wood. Now I'm going to start stenciling that. Oopie. Oh, my back's going to be off by the end of tonight. This thing is so heavy. Maybe you'll see a lot of open paint here, right? Yes, because yes. I've put them one side with my brushes. So just to recap, what am I painting with? I'm painting with um, Mood of Neptune from Petit Rouge. I'm painting with Chantilly Lace, which is a creamy color. And I'm painting with Mermaid Blush, which is like a salmon -y color. Those are the three colors I'm using on the back side of this. Um, it's actually inspirational from my backsplash where my stove is. So I've got these plastic tiles in there and I wanted to try and recreate the same type of color because it's going to be hanging right next to that. So here we go. Are you ready? So I'm starting off with the nautical but nice the turquoise color and I'm going to do the same I, I did up here different colors on each little tile. I'm just mixing the colors a bit that it's not the same as then. I've got some smaller brushes today because this is a much smaller stencil. So I managed to find one of these flat brush and a round brush. And this is just a normal dry brush. As long as the, the points are round or flat like this, then you should be okay with what you've got. And now, here yes. we go again. You're quick, Mom. I've got it on high speed. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so it helps putting your Air dry on an eye speed. <laughs> Are you going out, Lord? Our protector is yeah. So what have you been up to? Tell us what have you been doing? The first week is over, so you can't be cleaning house anymore. So what have you been up to? Tell us. Have you been walking in the garden? You can't go anywhere, so what have you been doing? <laughs> Remember the kitchen challenge tonight at 5. It closes, so you need to get your pictures up onto the page and show us what you've been doing, share with us what you've been doing. Um, that's just to get everybody inspirational so they can partake in the process and it also gives people hope just to be a bit creative so yeah if you can get your pictures up anything kitchen related or whatever you've done even if you have washed your dog and put a little ribbon in the hair um, share with us your your photographs so that other people can um, be uplifted as well I'm going to come and show you now how far I am with this little one. Now these little stencils are about 8 centimeters in height. The whole area is about 45. So I had to put in five different ones at the bottom. They're about 8 by 8. So they're actually very small as compared to these which are 15 by 15 centimeters.
I'll show you now. I just want to finish this one border. And then you tell me how it looks so far. You'll see that it's not the neatest of stenciling. The brush is a bit big. <laughs> All right, so let's show you quickly. So this is what I've been doing now. I'll be so glad once it's, it, this thing is finished because it's so heavy. Uh, I don't know how they're going to get it up against the wall, but she's not my problem. <laughs> so I'm using Nautical But Nice from Petit Rouge. And then I'm going to be going in with the salmon color, which is the mermaid blush and then lastly I'm going to go in with the Chantilly lace which is the beige one. Oh Sophia's making flexible lace. That's fine Sophia anytime you can join us. Even share your lace. I'm sure people would love to see that. That's an awesome craft. Okay so in the middle and now two left to do so I'm just stenciling the small piece of this wooden rack with smaller stencils which are about this size eight centimeters well, let me pick in and did, did it work with my brush <laughs> I just want to show you my mom's doing a crackle glaze <coughs> on this box so the first color was um, Midnight in Paris from Petit Rouge then we did the um, crackle. crackle over it and we dried it in between with the hair dryer and now she's going to do the second color and I, I explained before needs to be glitzed. <laughs> glitzed. <laughs> and now she's going to go with one movement she's going over the area so she makes sure she gets enough paint on her brush to do that one mo movement you can't go painting up and down over this then you will be closing your own cracks that doesn't sound right does it <laughs> but then it's a bit darker now that's fine and here in these little holes no, just, like just one. Them. Yeah, that's it. Leave it like that. So it's going to help look, make it look old. Okay, here I go again. Okay, I just want to show them how thick it actually works. So, Mom's just painted it, and you can already see the cracks are starting to form. So it actually happens very quickly. And then when you dry it, it sort of splits open. Yeah, it, it makes the cracks bigger. I'm painting this little mosaic tiles on the wood, small little wood piece of my rack. I'll show you all again now. It's just a little bit heavy to pick up. <laughs> okay, let me show you. Now I've done four pieces of it. One, two, three, and four. So I've just done oh, nautical but nice from Petit Rouge. That's the color I'm using now. And then I'm going to go over to the um, mermaid blush and the um, Chantilly lace. So I've got one more tile to do and then we're going over to the other color. Remember to share your pictures of what you've been doing. We've had a kitchen challenge this week so 
all the picks need to be onto the page by five um, and even if you don't have paint and you've been doing something else like working or sewing something put up your pictures and share with everybody it inspires people to create awesome stuff so yeah share with us please okay there you go and are you fully cracked now Okay, so we've been drying with the hair dry because it's overcast outside. And it's there you can nice. see the cracks. I've just realized I'm using the wrong brushes. <laughs> Shade Nikki. <laughs> yes, let me just tell you the difference. So whenever you stencil, Make sure that you've got either a flat stencil brush. These are little stubbies and these are longer ones. Or you're using a brush with a round point. Like these. Brushes like these. Brushes like these are going to go underneath your stencil. And you're going to have smearing. So you need something with tight bristles that you can use for sensing. I've got this one is like very old and it's a small little you can actually see the, the size difference but yeah use the right brush and your stencil won't smear um, Nicolene we do have some uh, stuff available but only once the lockdown is completed then we should have some more blanks available um, we are working currently on our new suitcases, so <clears throat> once they are ready, you will be the first to know. So what we normally do is we sell the suitcases with um, the stencil kit as well, so you can, you have everything in, uh, in one. Alright, so let's, I just want to finish this last little piece. Now today we cannot peek because it's stick together with the masking tape. Sure. So that is what we've done today. Only the green portions. I'm slow, eh? It's because I've been picking it up all the time. Alright, so the next colour I'm going to be going in with is the Mermaid's blush. This is a nice salmony color. Just to the right brush. And dedicate one brush to a color when you're doing this type of tiling work where you're going to be using three or four different colors. Dedicate one brush to a color. Okay, here we go again. Okay, so what we are doing is we are first painting with Midnight in Paris, my favorite color, and drying it with the hair dryer. And then we are painting just once with the Petit Rouge cracker to create cracks on the item. And then that's going to get dried as well. And then you do your lighter color over that. So you can choose either light color at the bottom. You need to have your cracker in the middle and it needs to dry in between. And then you need to have your other color at the top. So if you're using dark underneath, use a lighter color on top so that it can show the cracks. It doesn't help you use red and pink because they're too close together. You probably won't see the red cracks. Hi Ken, nice seeing you. So I am stenciling with the Mermaid blush at the moment. I'm trying to do some mosaic stencils that are about 8 cm high. The whole piece is 45, but there's 5 pieces of tiles in this. And what I want to do is I want to create a, 
a tile type of effect with different colors in. This is a spice rack, um, towel rack, call it what you want. It's over a meter in length, so it's, and it's actually made out of solid wood, so it's quite, quite heavy. <laughs> Remember your kitchen challenge. I keep on telling you guys, you've got until 5 o'clock this afternoon to post pictures of your items you've done for your kitchen to share with everybody and um, let me know what challenge you want to do next week uh, and we can all do it together what we do is we take pictures of what we've made or what we've done or what we sewed even if you've washed the dog and we put it on the, the page and share with everybody to share inspiration and creativity so yeah there you are. Hello, Rusty Bling. Kim, you on twice. <laughs> uh, King, Kim is from Rusty Bling. Remember that um, cutlery box we did, I think it was Monday, at a Rusty Bling embellishment of. So that came from Kim. I'm going to show you now. I just want to get a part of it done. My brush is very big, so I'm over stenciling in areas where I actually wanted to use another color. But I'm not too worried because my last brush is quite small. So hopefully I'll be able to get those details with the um, fine brush. I'm all out of brushes now. It's that time of the month. <laughs> so I'll show you what I've done now. The top part was done with 15 by 15 centimeter tile stencils. And this portion is now done with 8 centimeter tile stencils. Oh, there we go. Right, so. This is the big tiles. And those are the smaller little ones. We've done some aging on the edge with um, Neptune's Rust, which you mix, it's a powder, you mix it in with your paint and it makes a texture. I hope you can see, lovely texture. And then you just dust it off after you've sanded it down. Go. Right, so I just want to recap what my mom's doing here. This is a box we painted with Midnight in Paris from Petit Rouge. We then dried it completely and we then did a um, coat of the crackle from Petit Rouge and we dried it completely with the hairdryer. Thanks, Ma. <laughs> this is it. Okay, and now we're going to do a lighter color on top of this. And I just want to show them again because there's a lot of new people now. Yeah, that's enough. So you want to make sure that you've got enough paint on your brush so that you can do one stroke of paint. Letitia, yes, I'm going to present workshops. So you want to go one stroke of paint without going over it twice because if you go like this you're actually going to close up your cracks yes Judy I'll be adding these pencils to the range <laughs> just remember that they were customized for this box so if you want it in a different size we're just going to have to customize it for you I'm on the wrong color you're supposed to tell me I'm on the wrong color Is that enough? Yeah, I think that's enough. Oh, and that's how quick it starts cracking. So, by the way, we've just painted it now. And you can see it's starting to crack there. That's what it's supposed to do. And the moment you put some heat on it, it's actually going to make the crack a bit bigger. Alright. 
I'm not too sure if this is going to be looking very nice because I'm using very big brushes for a very small stencil. I'm hoping it's going to be okay. Otherwise, we just sand it a bit and say it's antique. <laughs> okay, so I'm almost done with the mermaid blush. And then I'll show you now how far it is. Okay, there we go. Not sure if I've got enough pink in there, but we'll check it now. All right, so yeah, with all. Rihanna, you're just in time to see your chair. That is the mosaic tiles that we've been doing in two colors now. I just want to show Rihanna her chair quickly because she was missing out on that. We did your stenciling this morning. No, no. There's your chair. It's going to read the wrong way around. But it needs to get another cut on the stencil. Reggie. It actually came out very nice. Okay, so I'm thinking this one stencil doesn't have enough of this salmon in. So I want to try and get some there. This is a utensil spice rack. It's over a meter long. It's solid wood. I missed a little spot here. You did? Rihanna's on, so I showed her your, the chair you did. Okay. I haven't heard anything from her yet. Rihanna's the chair, okay. <laughs> it still needs another coat of white. Yes, I see that. Okay, so I think this should be okay. Yeah, I think that is enough. Now what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be using the Chantilly Lace, which is a beige color. And because I'm using the smaller brush of the lot, I'm able to go over areas where I've maybe misstenciled. <laughs> it is quite a small stencil to work with, so you need to have um, fine stencil brushes for that. Yeah, I'm just as curious. I can't cook a lure today. So, just to recap, we've done some of the Neptune's rust on the aging. It's like a powder. And you mix the powder in with your paint. It works with any paint except oil paint. And um, it gives you a nice texture that you build on either with a palette knife or a brush. And then you can either dry brush over it or you can actually paint over it and sand it down. That's what we did. It's painted over it and sanded it down. We've got one corner that's still, it's almost dry, that we still need to sand. I just realized you're going to be walking up and down for eight, so eight, eight times. This is the last time. <laughs> okay, so this is a little <coughs> prank that we've done. Mom has done. <laughs> we've painted Midnight in Paris at the bottom. Uh, she, she dries it with the hair dryer so we can work it immediately. And then we put on a coat of the 
Crackle Glaze from Petit Rouge. You see it see through. And dry it up again. And dry it up again and then you put your second color over that and that creates the cracks. I know in, um, maybe you still do get that deco, deco cracks one and two. You used to do the one and then wait for it to dry and then you would do the second one and then you would work um, gilding paste into the cracks. Uh, I think you still get that, but this is just a quicker way to to yeah. achieve the same type of look. Okay, here I go again. Okay, goodbye. <laughs> Mom is drying with the hair dryer in the other room because it makes a lot of noise. Okay, now this is a very fine line. I'm hoping this little stencil brush comes to the party. I just want to show you. Wow. So do you see that small little fine line? That's the one we're trying to get with the stencil brush. So remember the kitchen challenge closes tonight at five o'clock. You need to put up pictures from anything you've re revamped in your kitchen. Um, that's just to share ideas and inspiration with other people being in lockdown. So if you haven't yet, upload your pictures and please give me an indication of what challenge you want to do next week. Is it going to be a bedroom challenge or a living room challenge? It cannot be a dining room challenge because I don't have a dining room. So um, mine is a business, so I don't have a dining room. So we can't do that unless I paint everyone's desks, which I've already done. So decide on what challenge you want to follow next week and um, then we can share pictures and ideas on that as well. So this is a large spice rack, kitchen rack, utensil rack that I've been wanting to paint over for a while now. The only difficult thing about it, it's very heavy. So, um, it's quite heavy to pick up and to show you guys what I've done. I am working with Chantilly Lace at the moment. It's a, a light cream color from Petit Rouge. Uh, hopefully I'm getting all of this in. I just want to show you this texture. Oh. So what we did is the, we mixed the rust with the midnight in Paris it creates that texture and then I painted over it and then I sanded it down and then it reveals <laughs> I see so then it actually reveals that antique look and this is the big stencil we've done. You back? Mm. Okay, so let's just show them again that crack once it's dry. So once the crack is dry, it actually looks quite glossy, like um, decoupage. And now we're going to do the lighter cover over it. Hi, Catherine Key. All right, so I'm stenciling with the um, Chantilly Lace on this Moroccan tile stencil. The stencil is only about eight centimeters high, so it's, it's a small little stencil like that. So you need quite a small brush to go in. I've only realized now more you know what. Mm -hmm. We've been having such a nice day today. It's almost three o'clock. If you just do the last yeah, blowing, I want to take this off first. So we're going to have to see this through now. 
I want to show you how it looks. It will be a surprise for us all. It might turn out really bad. <laughs> then we'll just paint over it again or distress it. Or it might turn out quite good. So let's hope for the best. So I'm almost done. I've got another two little stencils to do. Just the putting in the Chantilly lace, which is a creamy color from Petit Rouge. And then we can take the stencil off and see if I've actually done something right or wrong. <laughs> so what have you been doing in lockdown? How have you been keeping yourself busy? Tell us. Have you been sharing nice recipes? It's my turn to make supper tonight, so I was thinking of maybe doing some biltong soup. So I'm hoping the weather's going to stay this way and then we can have nice biltong soup. It's a very awkward thing to actually stencil and show you. Are you done? Yeah. All right. So this is the little rack we've done. Do you see the cracks? That's what we were after. And we might add a nice embellishment on the side. Uh, maybe it needs a new coat inside too because it's not yes, it will need another coat. good anymore. Maybe at the back too. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but we'll, we'll, we'll get cracking on that. Are we cleaning the crack uh, brush the same as the normal sealant? To yes. Otherwise it, it yeah, sticks to it. Yeah, you need to clean it immediately. Okay. Yeah, otherwise it becomes very hard and then you can throw the, the brush away. I want to show you the stencil before I actually take it off. <laughs> there you go. I think I'm done. Yeah, well, that, me and this thing now. I want to show it then. Can I still go and wash the brush? No. I'm okay. just going to take this off and show them. Okay. okay. Do you need help? That would be awesome. This masking tape, it only that sticks. But it's oh. still in there, that's why. Yeah. Alright, so yeah. the big reveal, are you ready? Well, you're going to have to hold one piece. I'll, I'll keep the majority of it. I'm talking about the piece because I'm going to lift it out. Okay. I'm going to lift it now. Oh. Stop. Ah. So there we go. That's pretty. That's a small one. But if you look closer, you'll probably see that I've made some mistakes. Nobody's perfect. Everybody makes mistakes. And just maybe on the sides touching it up there. Yes, can you must try it. It's actually quite an awesome product. So there you go, girls. Yeah, we'll take this off. I can't say girls and boys because I only see girls. So there you go girls, this is what we've done so far, this is how it's looking. I'm going to try and get the other side done as well. So remember the challenge for up until 5 o'clock this afternoon is for kitchen makeover or something in your kitchen that you wanted to do over, post some pictures on the page so that we can share our inspiration with each other and then Monday. Yes, we are going to be taking off Saturday and Sunday. We just want to work on some new flashy ideas for you for Monday. So you will see us again on Monday at 2 o'clock right here. And remember to like and share. And thank you for watching. Bye. Have a nice evening. Bye. Okay, you